Hi, my name is Chris Nielsen. I'm coming to you live from the iCafe studios in Lamar Consolidated ISD. We're going to spend the next few minutes walking through a few tutorials. If you've come to one of my presentations on Advanced Movie Maker, these short tutorials will help you uh, help remind you of some of those tips and tricks that we discussed earlier. Um, so on this webpage, you'll want to kind of click through and, and follow the tutorials in order or go specifically to the one that you're having trouble uh, remembering how to do. I've also included on this webpage a list of the sample files that you'll need for some of these projects. So let's dive right in. Uh, let's review a few aspects about Movie Maker first as we begin to look at it. One of the first things you need to know about Movie Maker is that you can recreate some of the aspects of a high quality studio. So you'll see here, kind of the studio that I'm sitting in here, you can spend fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 creating a studio like this. Uh, now, Movie Maker is never gonna produce an environment like this. I mean, I've got, I've got shadows that are moving behind me as I move, and none of this is real. Um, but with Movie Maker, you can, with your kids, give them aspects of that experience. You can put them in front of a green screen, uh, you could do some overlays and some simple things like that. The way that Movie Maker handles these is through a set of custom transitions, and they work via XML. Now, this is some nasty-looking text on the screen right now. Most of it is not human-readable. What matters is kind of that middle, the, the middle line that's the far, farthest to the right, um, where it says parameter name. So this is where you change the value of the transition. So right here, all of this nasty stuff is simply saying, this is going to be a transition with a wheel. How many spokes will it have? Eight. And you can change that eight to a six, a four, a 16 to change the way that the transition looks. What the XML allows you to do is take the transitions that Microsoft has built for you and you can customize them. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to utilize that to trick some different transitions. Microsoft gives us a transition where it'll take the the, the screen and it will shrink it and fly it off to the top right corner till it disappears. What we can do is stop that transition part way through so we end up with a picture in picture. So we're gonna, we're gonna walk through editing some of that XML and changing those transitions. The next thing that you need to remember is that as we're editing video, there's some ways that you can layer video on top of things. So I wanna talk about compositing very briefly. So if we have a background image, you'll see the, the background image here. We'll talk about chroma key first. Chroma key is where you remove all of a particular color value from the image. In fact, right now, I'm not in a real studio. I'm doing chroma key. So I'm actually standing in front of a, sitting in front of a green screen, and with the simple click of a button, we can remove all of the green and put me in this virtual studio. So with Movie Maker, the chroma key is not as advanced as what you're seeing here, but it will remove all of a color value. Um, you'll want a nice screen. It does, you don't have to spend money on this. You can paint a wall green, paint a wall blue. It also doesn't matter what color you use. You just want to use co a color that's very bright, high contrast. Blue and green uh, tend, to, tend to give you that. Uh, you want to light it fairly well. Um, and you want to make sure that your, your students in front of that screen aren't wearing that color because you don't want to, uh, well, maybe you do want a floating head. That, that could be the look that you're going for. If so, dress them in green shirts and have their heads float in front of the screen. Composite AB. This is where you have, uh, it's, it's similar to a chroma key, but it actually removes a color value. So where a chroma key is going to remove all of a particular shade of blue, composite's going to take out black and anything that that is partially black, so the grayscale pixels, those will all turn transparent. Um, in fact, we'll put a, a, a composite back on the screen here. My, my name at the bottom of the screen is a composite. Um, that's actually a black tile with the green banner at the bottom. But when you composite it, the black up at the top disappears, turns transparent, and you get this nice overlay effect. The final one is a transparent PNG uh, that Movie Maker can handle. This is not a, a, a composite that most software programs will utilize, but what this does is it's gonna let you take a piece of clip art and you can move it around on the screen. So we could have this flower fly across the screen. This is nice if you're, if you're trying to make Movie Maker or handle special effects. You can have fake birds fly across. Uh, um, 
uh, you could have a map and you could have a, a plane move across the map uh, using the transparent PNG. So the way this looks, we could have our background. We could add a chroma key transition. So the blue disappears. A composite AB, you see that the black turns clear, but we get this nice shadow, the, the gradient, the white light from the sun is fading out. A chroma key wouldn't give you that. A chroma key would leave a harsh edge around the sun. And then the PNG overlay, which definitely leaves a harsh edge. It looks like it is sitting on top of things, because it is, uh, but it allows us for some degree of movement. The final slide that I want to show you as we talk about Movie Maker, and we can just leave it on the TV behind me, um, is the coordinate system that Movie Maker uses. So we're going to edit those nasty looking XML files to tell it how we want objects to move, but it moves them via the coordinate system you see behind me. So it counts from the, uh, the upper corner at 0, 0, and you'll see it counts down uh, 0, 0.5 to 1, and then 0 0.5 to 1 moving down till you get to the bottom corner which is 1 1. So that's the coordinate system that you need to use to have things move across the screen. And you can go outside of those bounds. So you can go past 1 or into a negative number if you want the object to start off of the screen and move on to the screen and continue all the way off. So in the next segment we're actually going to talk about adding those custom XML files to your Movie Maker installation uh, and, and we'll begin some basic edits of those. Thank you for watching part one, uh, and uh, we'll see you soon.